जय अद्वैत जय अद्वैता चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंदा जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंदा जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंदा we continue reading today from teachings of lord chaitanya he is being speaking to prakashananda saraswati and continue chapter 23 can somebody please read sorry i cannot hear you if somebody can read please i'm sorry I just said that I cannot read. If somebody can read, please. Ah, okay. So, is anyone else available to read? Yeah, I can read. Okay, thank you. Therefore, by studying Shrimad Bhagavatam, we can learn about our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, understanding the procedure for regaining Him, and attain the ultimate realization. Which is love of Godhead. So again, what are the three things being mentioned here? What are the three terms? Sambandh, abhi, mm -hmm. ear, and prayojit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. Next, Lord Chaitanya explained to Prakashanand Saraswati how one can achieve. the supreme personality of godhead by devotional service first the lord quoted a verse from shrimad bhagavatam 11.14.21 in which krishna says that he can be realized only through devotional service executed with faith and love indeed it is devotional service alone which purifies the heart of the devotee and elevates him to the ultimate realization by which he serves the supreme lord with faith and love even if one is born in a low family like a family of chandalas dog eaters one can become filled with transcendental symptoms through realization of the supreme stage of love of godhead these transcendental symptoms are mentioned are mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam 11.3.31 स्मरत स्मरयत मिठो अगौर हरी भक्त सजातया भक्त बिबरती उत्फुलकनु वेन प्योर डिवोटी डिस्कस सब्जेक्ट्स डीलिंग विद अ सुप्रीम लॉर्ड हु कैन क्लेंस all kinds of sinful re reactions from the heart of his devotee they become overwhelmed with ecstasy and display different symptoms due to their devotional service the bhagavatam bhagavatam 11.2.40 also states when pure devotees chant the lord's holy name due to their spontaneous attachment for the lord they sometimes cry sometimes laugh sometimes dance sometimes sing and so on not caring for any social convention so here lord chaitanya is continuing to speak that one can um revive his relationship with krishna by devotional service bhakti bhakti with faith and love with faith and love can when one is serving krishna with faith and love one will get the realization 
elevates into the ultimate realization by which. So devotional service, we continue to engage in devotional service and then we can be situated on the platform to serve Krishna with faith and love. The, you know, the pre Krishna Prema. That's the ultimate goal. So is it that only particular people can engage in devotional service? Is it like, you know, you have to be born in a particular family or a particular community to engage no. in devotional service? No, anyone from any, even a low family, born in a low family can also yeah. engage. Yeah, so we can all engage in devotional service. Each of us can engage in devotional service. And then when one engages in devotional service, Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya is pointing out, Bhagavatam is saying that the devotee becomes ecstatic, bhava, because he's getting this emotions for Krishna. So when he's hearing and chanting, his, you know, he he's he has so much emotions. That's he's that's called ecstasy. And then these different ecstatic symptoms could be manifest in his body. You know, he could be crying or laughing by hearing this. And Bhagavatam, same, Bhagavatam is saying that when the pure devotees are hearing and chanting. Because they are so attached to Krishna, they're hearing and chanting with love. They're crying or laughing or dancing even or singing. They're not caring for anything else. So then what we may say, oh, what is it? Then do I really want to get pure devotional service? Will I become, will people think I'm mad? No, nobody will think we are mad. We should aspire to get pure devotional service. That, that is a pure desire that we can have to engage in pure devotional service. There are so many pure devotees who may not exhibit such symptoms. You know, Shla Prabhupada never exhibit. Rarely once or twice he would, uh, you know, have some tears in his eyes. But otherwise he was preaching philosophy, barely sleeping also. So, yeah. There was one, I think, sometime back, uh, there was a video, which I think it came even on TV, that one police officer, he was in Brindavan, he was doing his duty. Suddenly, he got so overwhelmed with ecstasy. He was dancing away, his eyes closed, and he took out the video, you know, to show. Let's see how <laughs> na, he got. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This reminds me, like, you know, when I read this. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, because it's so spontaneous. You know, you're just heart is pulled. And Imagine he was with his uniform, uniform and you were just, you know, just dancing away. Uh -huh. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were hearing of. And now you're telling us practically. <laughs> And when one is hearing and chanting about Krishna, the heart gets so happy. Happy, yeah. Like, you know, the people were singing and, you know, how during that thing, that Mela, and he was just, he got into that. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. We should understand, therefore, that Srimad Bhagavatam is the real explanation of the Brahma Sutra. For it is compiled by the same author, Vyasadeva himself. In the Garud Puran, it is said, Artho ayam Brahma Sutra nam Bharatartha Vinir Naya Gayatri Bhasya Rupo Asau Vedartha Pariprim Granto Astadasha Sahasra Srimad Bhagavata Vidaha. Srimad Bhagavatam is the authorized explanation of the Brahma Sutra. 
and it is a further explanation of the Mahabharata. It is the explanation of the Gayatri Mantra and the essence of all Vedic knowledge. The Srimad Bhagavatam containing 18,000 verses is known as the explanation of all Vedic literature. In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the sages of Nemi Sharanya asked Sut Goswami to explain the essence of Vedic literature. In answer, Sut Goswami presented Srimad Bhagavatam as the essence of all the Vedas, histories and other Vedic literatures. Elsewhere in Srimad Bhagavatam 12.13.15, it is clearly stated that Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta knowledge and that one who re relishes the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam has no taste for studying any other literature. In the very beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, the purport of the Gayatri Mantra is described. I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Truth. Thus, from the first verse, Srimad Bhagavatam deals with the Supreme Truth, which is described in the Bhagavatam as the source of the creation, maintenance and destruction of the cosmic manifestation. Obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Vasudeva. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya directly indicate Lord Sri Krishna, who is the divine son of Vasudeva and Devaki. That Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead is more explicitly presented later in Sriman Bhagavatam 1.3.28, where Vyasadeva asserts that Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and that all others are either his direct or indirect plenary portions, portions or portions of these of those portions. Srila G. Goswami has still more explicitly developed this subject in his Krishna Sandarbha. And Brahma, the original living being, has substantially explained the subject of Sri Krishna in his treatise Brahma Samhita. The Sama Ved also verifies the fact that Lord Sri Krishna is the divine son of Devaki. So Lord Chaitanya is explaining uh, the position of Srimad Bhagavatam. Vyasadev, Vyasadev, he, he compiled the Vedas. He put it in writing. Then he divided it into four. It was one big Ved. He divided it into four, you know. And then he wrote the different explanations and the Puranas and Upanishads, everything he put in writing. Then he wanted to put it in condensed form, Sutra, because he said it's so vast. How will somebody read it? So he put it, he wrote the Vedanta Sutra, the essence of all the Vedas, he put it in the sutra form. Then he wrote Bhagavatam as an explanation to this Vedanta Sutra. So all the author is all Vyasade. He is incarnation of Naraya. He's not ordinary person. If he was ordinary person, then the Vedas would not be perfect. So they are perfect because he's incarnation of Naraya and he is. He has simply recorded what Krishna spoke. So he recorded the Vedas, then he divided the Vedas into four, then he wrote this explanation in the Vedanta Sutra, then he explained the Vedanta Sutra, and that explanation is Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is called the cream of the essence of all Vedas. By studying Srimad Bhagavatam means we have studied all the Vedas that there are. And from Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, first chapter, first verse itself, Nasadev explains that Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, I offer my obeisances unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, who is the son of Vasudev and Devki. So there is no doubt in anyone's mind as to the identity of God. First, first, Bhagavatam begins with this. 
So we can understand God is a person. His name is Krishna. And then in same verse, he's explaining that God is the creator of all the material and spiritual worlds. He's explaining his positions right from the first verse. That, that is, that's why Bhagavatam is called Amala Puran, the most pure of all the Puranas. There's nothing material in Bhagavatam. It's all transcendental. And then Vyasadeva is also saying that there are so many incarnations, incarnations of incarnations, but Krishna is the supreme. Uh, he's the original personality of Godhead. Like there are so many candles. One candle can light so many different, different candles. Yet there is one original candle. That is Sri Krishna Bhagavan. So here he is describing he's the source of creation, maintenance, destruction of the cosmic manifestation. So there's no ambiguity. There's no doubt. Oh, who created the material world? Or maybe it just was a big, big bang or something, you know, or it just exists by itself. One fine day we were sleeping. There was nothing. There was dust and we got up and there was the creation. No. The first verse he's saying. God is he, Krishna. He is the source of all creation, maintenance, destruction. So, very clear. In Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya is saying, one who studies, relishes the Bhagavatam, he has no taste for any other literature. No taste for studying any other literature. One who relishes the knowledge of Bhagavatam. Study. Prabhupada would say, if you study Bhagavatam, you'll find Krishna in the pages of Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya, you would love to read Bhagavatam. He would love to hear Bhagavatam. From Gadadhar Pandit, especially, he would hear. And specifically, pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruv Maharaj, he would hear it again and again. He would finish it and tell Gadadhar Pandit, now you start from the beginning. Now you read again. Now you read again. That is Bhagavatam. What is mentioned Sanatana about the Gayatri Mantra? I didn't get yeah, it. Dimahi, the very first chap, first, um, very first verse of Bhagavatam includes the Gayatri Mantra. Dimahi, it says. You know, um, can't remember the verse very clearly, but we can look it up. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Chapter 1, text 1. So here, mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Adhyasya Yato Anvaya Etaras Chartesha Abhikya Swarat Tene Brahma Hridaya Ya Adi Kavaya Muyanti Yatsura Yaha Tejo Vari Mridam Yatha Vinimayo Yatra Tri Sargom Risha Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kohakam Satyam Param Dimahi. So this Dimahi, this is the Gayatri Mantra. I do meditate upon the Supreme Absolute Truth. So Vyasadeva is putting it for our benefit over there. The Gayatri. You know, because we are not Brahmanas, we cannot study the chant, the Gayatri, but he's putting it for us. So we will be able to understand the position of Krishna. And he, in the first verse itself, he's saying, uh, for my respectful obeisances to Vasudev, all, all pers pervading personality of Godhead, I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he's the absolute truth and primable cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. 
I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. So we can see how so clearly Bhagavatam, there is no doubt as to who is God. The very first verse of Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasadeva is saying, who is God? And then specifically of the um, this Dimahi, he, he Prabhupada mentions in the purport. He purposely invokes a Gayatri Mantra Dimahi. This Gayatri Mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. When one is successful in chanting the Gayatri Mantra, he can enter into the transcendental position of the Lord. One must. It's only the brahmanas that can that can chant the Gayatri. One who has the brahmanical initiation, the second initiation. But mm. Shri Vyasadeva is putting this Gayatri here for our benefit, so that we can understand the pos the position of Krishna. This reference it is said with reference to the Gayatri mantra. Mm -hmm. So these are the so that we can get this realization of Lord Krishna. That's why he's put Dimahi there. Okay. That's the Gayatri Mantra there. Right? Okay. So Lord Chaitanya is explaining the, the importance of Bhagavatam. Uh, by Bhagavatam is very, very purifying. By hearing Bhagavatam, we can understand Krishna, we can realize Krishna. Uh, as we said, Lord Chaitanya would give a very, he would stress a lot on Bhagavatam. And it's the essence of all Vedic knowledge, Bhagavatam. We don't need to study other Vedas. We simply, a Bhagavatam means we have studied all the Vedas, Vedanta. Of course, if anyone wants to do it, they're welcome too. But the essence is the Bhagavatam. To, like, what's the understanding of all the Vedas? That's Bhagavatam. Krishna is the Supreme Lord. And we are all parts and parcels of him. And we are meant to engage in his devotional service. By engaging in devotional service, we can be so we can revive our love for Krishna. Okay. We will continue. In his prayer, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.1, the author of Srimad Bhagavatam first proposes that Lord Sri Krishna is the primal Lord. And if any transcendental nomenclature for the absolute personality of Godhead is to be accepted. It should be the name Krishna, meaning all attractive. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has affirmed in many passages that he is the original personality of Godhead. And this was confirmed by Arjuna, who cited great sages like Narad, Vyas, and many others. Also in the Padma Puran, it is stated, that of the innumerable names of the Lord, the name Krishna is the principal one. Therefore, although the name Vasudev indicates the plenary portion of the personality of Godhead, and although all the different forms of the Lord are identical with Vasudev, in, the, in this text, Vasudev principally indicates the divine son of Vasudev and Devaki. Shri Krishna is always meditated upon by the Paramhamsas, those who are most perfect in the renounced order of life. Vasudev or Lord Shri Krishna is the cause of all causes, and everything that exists is an emanation from Him. Now, this is so is explained in later chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam. So the Lord Chaitanya is continuing to <clears throat> speak of the um, position of Krishna as the first verse which we just read. Krishna mm -hmm. 
himself is saying he's the original personality of Godhead. Arjuna is confirming it. All the great authorities, Narad, Vyas, Asita, Devala, all the these. Brahma Samhita. Yeah. Brahma Samhita, yes, that's right. Ishwara Parama Krishna. So Krishna. all the authorities are citing that Krishna, he's the original personality of Godhead, original form of God. And everything that exists is coming from Krishna. Is an emanation from him. Not, there's nothing that is not coming from Krishna. Everything is coming from Krishna. It's the cause of all causes. We do some research work, we'll say because, 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 because. But the cause of all causes is Krishna. Everything is Krishna or Krishna's. Yes. Yeah, it's only Krishna or Krishna's. Yes. yes. Yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes Srimad Bhagavatam as the spotless Puran because it contains transcendental narrations of the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. The history of Srimad Bhagavatam is also very glorious. Sri Vasudev, Vyasudev, drawing on his mature experience of transcendental knowledge, compiled it under the instruction of Sri Naraji, his spiritual master. Vyasudev had compiled all the Vedic literatures, the four Vedas, the Vedanta Sutra, or Brahma Sutra, the Puranas, and the Mahabharata. Yet he was not satisfied. His dissatisfaction was of, observed by his spiritual master. And thus, Narad advised him to write about the transcendental activities of the Lord, Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna's transcendental activities are specifically described in the 10th canto of Sri Mad Bhagavatam. The canto considered to contain the substance of the whole work. One should not approach the 10th canto immediately, but should approach it gradually by developing knowledge of the subject matters first presented. So Lord Chaitanya says the Bhagavatam is Amal Puran, spotless. There is no tinge of Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. It is completely on the Transcendental platform contains transcendental narrations of Krishna, his incarnations, his expansions, his pure devotees, Krishna's own leelas. And then, as we are saying, that Vyasadim, he had compiled, you know, the full Vedas he wrote, he divided them, he wrote the Puranas, he did so much work, and yet, and Mahabharat, he was not feeling happy. He was feeling dissatisfied. Something is lacking. Nara told him, because you did not clearly tell the people of Kalyug what they have to do. You're giving them Vedas, they're going to get confused. They will not know actually what is to be done, what is the way out. So that's why Bhagavatam is said to be giving us light in this dark age of Kali. Bhagavatam is like the shining sun, giving us the light. That Hearing about Krishna, hearing his pastimes, hearing his position, hearing about his devotees. These are all transcendental. Krishna's pastimes are not material. So Krishna's pastimes are in the 10th canto. So people will say, oh, so Krishna's original form of God. So I just need to read the 10th canto. Why should I take trouble and read first, second, third, all these cantos for what? But we will not be able to understand 10th canto if we don't start from the first verse, first chapter, first canto. Why? Because we need to understand the position of Krishna. We are thinking he's same like us or just like an ordinary boy, maybe a little bit more powerful or just maybe like a king or something. But when we actually hear Bhagavatam from the beginning, we understand Krishna's supreme position. How what, what that he is the supreme lord, the lord and master of the material worlds, the spiritual worlds, we living entities are parts and parcels of him. That's why 
Prabhupada is writing, gradually developing knowledge of subject matter presented first. This is Lord Chaitanya's instruction. Let's study Bhagavatam systematically. Yeah, and you can be misunderstood, right? If, the, if you go straight to 10, can do. Because the yeah. Leelas are there and uh, many things, like many times people just like misinterpret. Yes, that's right. Misinterpret, not understanding what's the position of the devotees, yeah. what's the position of Krishna. Yes, that's, that's right. And then we may, you know, make some claims, oh, why Krishna is dancing with the gopis, why yeah. he's stealing what all these things. But if we understand that, oh, everything belongs to Krishna anyways, they are, everything is his energy, you know, then we will be able to understand his his personal pastimes in Vrindavan. Also, otherwise, we may think that his pastimes are all material, no? Yeah. Or like something else, some material thing. Not understanding that they are really, they're actually transcendental. And it's purifying for us to hear his pastimes. No. And of course, for people who really want to know Krishna's pastimes, Srila Prabhupada, he wrote the Krishna book separately so that we can read the pastimes and not get, no, don't misunderstand because he's given such good explanations. The Krishna book, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, we read once a week. We are reading that once a week with Bhavna. Very good. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so can relish the Krishna's pastimes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Shri Prabhupada Ki Chai Kaur Bhakti Vindhi Ki